they could possibly issue another Sukuk mm. bond later in the future. So what, we, what we've observed is that there's a class of investors, ethical investors, who are interested in such instruments. Mm. And uh, we think there will be moderate subscription for this particular Sukuk bond issuance. So if the government is leveraging on the success it experienced at the last issuance to also come up with this issuance. And like you said, the funds are targeted to be geared towards the development of infrastructural projects, basically roads uh, across six geopolitical zones. Mm. And the vehicle for this investment is the FGN Road Sukuk Company. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's a Sukuk bond, so it's not an interest-bearing security in theory. Uh, it has a rental rate of 15.74% yeah. at this time. Mm -hmm. The last Sukuk bond that was issued that the previous year had a rental rate of around 16.47%. So we mostly see that the federal government benchmarks mm -hmm. the Sukuk rental rate to the interest rate on similar securities in the secondary market. Mm -hmm. So you have the FGN 2026 bond, which is the on the run bond. The 2025 bond, which should have been benchmarked to this, is not on the run. So it's not actively traded in the market. But the 2026 bond, which is the on the run bond, is, was offered at 15.71% on Friday. So that shows you why the government was able to mark the rental rate on this particular one yeah. to 15.74%. Right. So with this, this, this uh, the federal government has more or less been congratulated on its success at the last one. Mm. And I believe they'll be looking forward to decent subscriptions at this particular auction. What are investors telling you about the initial one, the inaugural version of it? And uh, now that this one is coming out, are they satisfied with what the proceeds for the previous one has been used for in terms of road construction? So, you know, in Nigeria, most times when... We have, uh, we told what funds will be used for, but I don't know if they were not, we're not, we may not be put up to date on what they are being used for at part time. Mm -hmm. but what we know investors are looking at is the credibility. The federal government would not default on their obligations with regards to the Sukuk bond. It is backed by the full faith and credit of the federal government. So irrespective of what the funds are going to be used for, how effectively, how effectively they are being utilized, investors are assured that at the right time they will get their coupon payments and upon maturity, their principal invested will be redeemed. So a lot of investors or a lot of uh, Nigerians have been asking, uh, how do we invest in this? Is this for corporates alone or retail investors can also participate? For all classes of investors. In fact, the DMO is largely targeting the retail investors, those right. who are faith-based and averse to interest-bearing securities. It's to accommodate all class of investors, mm. regardless of what your, 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 your underlying interests are particularly. So some class of investors may not be attracted to other fixed income instruments by the federal government, but yeah. if they can uh, key into the Sukuk bond program, then it also gives them the opportunity to be part of the funding of the federal government's infrastructural objectives. I know a lot of time investors are less concerned about what the federal government uses the proceeds for eventually. They are more interested in how they get their money back. Uh, but you know that crude oil price has now been reducing till spinning seriously. And uh, even though we know that OPEC was think, considering uh, Nigeria, you know, also reducing its output, but then we got a reaction from our uh, Minister of State for Petroleum. At the end of the day, do you think we'll still have the capacity to service these debts? Okay, so the DMO at the last, recently did a debt sustainability analysis for Nigeria, okay. which it does, I think, every five years to look critically at what the current debt situation is and the capacity of the country to meet up with its debt obligations. So we are currently at a moderate risk of debt, debt default, which is it's, it's slightly acceptable. There are, there are stress signs. There are stress signs for us. The, the federal government's debt is growing. Mm. Euro bonds of about uh, five points, above $5 billion have been issued this year alone, and the federal government is still ramping up its, uh, is still ramping up its borrowings to be able to meet up with infrastructure, infrastructure deficits. You can't blame the federal government because uh, they will have to generate uh, sources, they, they will have to generate uh, sources of funds to finance the budget. Mm. And in a case where oil revenues, which are the principal or mainstay of the economy, begins to decline or dwindle, the government is under pressure because we've not been able to effectively diversify our non-oil revenue sources. Despite some of the lot of uh, talks on that, we're still not where we're supposed to be yet in that regard. So oil revenue is still the largest part of what we need to service our obligations. But, uh, for capital development, for debt service, and for recurrent expenditures. And now the oil price situation is very tricky. Nigeria's gross domestic productivity over the years has been seen to more or less oscillate with the level of oil prices in the global market. Mm -hmm. And we've not yet been able to draw ourselves from that conundrum 
of uh, oil price shocks in global economies. Uh, so at earlier this, at some point, at some point earlier, uh, some months ago, a month or two months ago, oil prices really rebounded to uh, uh, year highs mm -hmm. of uh, as high as eighty six point seven four dollars, the Brent crude price. And some analysts were even of the opinion that oil price could get to as high as hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But with uh, a lot of uh, global we, global uh, sentiments, uh, we have a, a estimates of there to be weak demand in uh, weak uh, global growth mm -hmm. in the coming year. And uh, you're seeing uh, sentiments around the U.S. is going to be in, in, yeah, increasing its supply of oil into the market. Okay, and uh, okay. some other producers are also ramping up supplies. We've seen pressure on oil prices. So that's remains a very tricky situation for us and it's something we should really look into. So uh, basically it leaves us in a, in a, in a negative uh, situation as, as things are. We might just have to continue to borrow, to pay and borrow, to pay and borrow. So, so, so I'm, I'm not, not particularly negative, but in a, in, a, in a very stressful situation where you are prone to oil price shocks, global externalities. Mm -hmm. So ordinarily, when we, do, we don't have the resistance to, to, to what's happening in the global economy. So when China and U.S. are engaged in the confrontation, you are affected because it's affecting global commodity prices. And because we do not have a robust domestic economy, we are, we are, we are, we are exposed to those shocks. And Nigeria does not refine its oil mm. at this point in time. We are still largely dependent on crude oil, um, refined oil imports. So you don't benefit from falling oil prices. And even when there's an increase in oil prices, you still buy crude oil expensively. So basically, we just don't have the necessary buffers that we need yet. Exactly. Well, that is very, very, uh, is, a, is a big source of concern. Anyways, you're still very much around. We'll continue uh, our discussion on the bonds and, of course, the sukuk now. Uh, when we come back from the break, stick around. Uh, don't go away. <laughs> 